Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Tuesday, October 8th. If you were just tuning in, we just finished going over the NFL Power Rankings. In this segment, we're continuing our rankings, talking about the NCAA College Football Top 25. My Top 25 here for you. Crazy, crazy week. Four teams in the top 10 lose, six teams in the top 25 lose, five teams in the top 11 lose. What a crazy week it was. We're going to break down what that did to the standings and more coming up in just a second. But before we do, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. Or if you are on YouTube, you can use that super chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Tuesday, October 8th. But like I was saying, we are going to get into the NCAA Top 25. But before we do, of course, we do this every week with the Group of Five having a playoff team, an auto bid. We do the G5-T5, the Group of Five Top 5. It's basically the same as last week, except one team has fallen off the rankings. Two teams on this ranking from last week took a loss, that being UNLV and James Madison University, JMU, off of the list after a brutal loss for them, losing by two points to University Louisiana Monroe. ULM, they coach themselves out of that victory. The Dukes fall off the list here, but at number five, it's Washington State. They took a tough loss to Boise State a little while ago, but that's a really good football team. I don't blame them too much for that. Washington State at number five. Then we have the two service academies, Army and Navy, at number four and number three. There's a scenario here where they play for the playoffs and then play Army-Navy week and then potentially play one more time in the playoffs. That would be a crazy scenario, but still, this would be a fun matchup. At number two, it's UNLV. They took a tough loss to Syracuse in overtime, but they look so much better with Malik with Haj Malik Williams at quarterback. This is just a good UNLV team. Their defense played really solid against a good Syracuse Orange team. And at number one, it's Boise State. Heisman frontrunner Ashton Genty. This team deserves more respect than it's getting. This is a really, really good Boise State team, and I think... Uh, They've all, as long as they win out, they've all but locked up that group of five spot. But getting into the top 25 here, at 25, it's SMU. The SMU Mustangs get a huge win over number 22, Louisville. Louisville gets their second straight loss of the second straight loss for this season. SMU has been playing great football. They lose week one, but after that, they locked in, and they've been playing great. That offense is off. The charge offense continues to find work. Let's look at a lot of events in college football. Four, we have the Illinois Fighting Illini. Illinois coming off of another good game. They're up one spot here. Illinois just continues to win football games. They've been challenged a lot this year, but their offense and their defense have taken a huge step up. They're in that second tier of the Big Ten looking to make a jump up. They've got a tough schedule coming up, including one against a couple of really good Big Ten teams like Nebraska and I and excuse me, Indiana coming up soon. So we'll see what happens next. At 23, it's Utah. They had a bye week this week. But still. They're about the same team we all we all knew they were, right? Without Cam War, excuse me, without Cam Rising, they're just not the same team. They need a lot of work. If Cam Rising is in there, they're the best team in the Big 12. Without Cam Rising, they're barely a blip on the radar, and that kind of is unacceptable, I think. This is a team that should be making waves they've had to deal with the same quarterback injury for like five straight years and they haven't learned from it utah barely holding on to that top 25 spot 
At 22, another team that's barely holding on to the top 25 spot, it's USC. The Trojans suffer another loss. They were at 11 last week. They're down seven spots in my personal poll. This team just isn't putting a lot of confidence in me. They are very close to being out of it, but it's been such a mess this year in college football, and especially this week. They hold on to their spot because of how messy it's been for them all season long. At 21, it's Kansas State. Kansas State, again, they had a bye this week, but still, they looked really, really good after, you know, falling out of the top 25, at least in my top 25. They got a win last week. There's no reason to punish them any further. Kansas State, good football team, Big 12 competitor. At 20, it's the Kentucky Wildcats. With how crazy the SEC has been all season long, Kentucky deserves to be ranked. I know they're not ranked nationally, but still, Kentucky is a very good football team. They took Georgia to the brink. They beat Ole Miss, two top 10 teams in the nation that they beat and almost beat. They should get some credit for that. Kentucky continues to play good football. They destroyed South Carolina, who almost beat LSU. This is going to be this is this is a wild SEC year this season, this season and Kentucky deserves a little bit of respect. At 19, it's the Indiana Hoosiers, the first and only current bowl eligible team. 6 and 0, Kurt Signetti just wins anywhere. I've been telling this to you guys ever since this season started in the in the uh preview for the Big 10. Watch out for Indiana. They are 6 and 0 now. The the J they've stolen half of JMU's players. Uh maybe that's a little bit of me getting a little bit of school pride here, but still Kurt Signetti, a great coach, one of the best in the nation in my opinion. He just finds a way to win wherever he goes. This Indiana team is really really good. 6 and 0, the first bowl eligible team in the nation. This is only the second time ever they've been 6 and 0. They get a tough test this time against Nebraska. I think they can do it, but we'll do some previews of that later on. At number 18, it's Mizzou. A brutal loss for them against Texas A&M this week. They were ranked in the top 10 for so long. A couple of shaky games, able to hold off uh, some losses. They finally drop one, and they drop pretty far. They're down, in my poll, 8 spots, down 10 spots, down, down over 10 spots in the AP poll. It's just a brutal look. For Missouri, a crazy SEC. Again, it's going to be a crazy SEC schedule. Mizzou, I think, is still a good team. But that offense needs to be a little bit more consistent. At 17, it's Texas A&M. They put the smackdown on my number 18 team, Missouri. Absolutely destroyed them. Texas A&M coming in. Connor Wegman, his first start since week two. And this team looked, looked like a completely different animal. They really did. They look like one of the best teams in the nation. I want to see it one more time before I promote them too far. But Texas A&M, a very, very good football team. At 16, we've got BYU. They are coming in off of a bye. But still, what they've done earlier on in this season has proven why they should be a top 20 team in the country. They move up a little bit by virtue of what a crazy week it was. BYU, watch out for them in the Big 12. 15, it's Oklahoma, another team on a bye, moves up a little bit by virtue of some losses. This is a good Oklahoma team. Again, everything I just said about BYU can apply. That Oklahoma Sooners defense is awesome. That offense needs to be a little bit more consistent, but still, they win a couple of tough games. They're up here at 15. 14 belongs to the LSU Tigers. LSU, I mean, they destroy they absolutely destroy in a game that I was not expecting to be that big. Uh, they, excuse me. Apologize. LSU off of a bye this week. LSU coming in off of you know a, a matchup with a couple of teams. This is this is a good excuse me. This is a good LSU team. I really do think this is a good LSU team. Garrett Nussmeyer coming in leads that offense pretty solidly. They have got a lot to work on. Nothing's perfect about this team. But if they can win a couple more big SEC games, including one this week, I think they could get a big boost in the rankings, especially, again, with everything that happened this week. At 13, and this is probably my hottest take, Boise State moves all the way up in my rankings to number 13. Ashton Genty on a Heisman collision course. The Boise State Broncos have been near unstoppable. Ashton Genty, 
is ha- has over 10 yards a carry, almost 15 yards a carry this season. He's on pace for 2,700 yards for 40 touchdowns. He's going to shatter running back records if he's able to keep this up. I can't imagine what he would what he would do if he played in the second half of games. He's sat out of two halves so far. He's only played 16 out of 20 possible quarters, and he's doing this. That is ridiculous. He is awesome. More respect needs to go on Ashton Genty's name. 12, we get into the top 12 here, the playoff field of sorts, I will say. Notre Dame. Notre Dame with another big win last week. They were on a bye. Can't give them any credit for that. We can say they beat the bye week, but, you know, that doesn't mean anything. They benefit from a lot of teams losing yet again. I want to see it. That loss to Northern Illinois is a little concerning, but still, they've looked really good every single week outside of that. At 11, it's Ole Miss. Ole Miss with a big win over South Carolina, a team that gave fits to LSU. I know they just came off of a loss to Kentucky, a team that I think is very good. But with everyone else in the SEC losing, they stand a chance. They're back in it now. I think this is anybody's race. And Ole Miss, I think, benefited one of the most from this week. At 10, it's Iowa State. Iowa State's defense is brutal. Iowa State's offense is doing just enough, and they are clearly, in my opinion, a top 10 team and the best team in the Big 12. I think they're almost a lock to win the Big 12 as long as Cam Rising doesn't come back. This is a really good Iowa State team. They're in my top 10. At 9 goes Tennessee. They took a brutal loss to the to, to, to to the Razorbacks here, to the Arkansas Razorbacks. This is a really good. This is a this is a team in 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 Arkansas that I think doesn't get enough credit, right? I talk about it a lot. I think it's chaos incarnate whenever they step on the field. They kind of turn the football into chaos ball and Tennessee wasn't able to deal with that. They've still got a young team, a young quarterback. This is a good team. They're hanging on to the top 10. I need to see them do it against an SEC excuse me, an SEC opponent. They're in danger of falling a little bit though. At eight, it's Clemson. And outside of that loss to Georgia, they have looked near unstoppable. Clemson, absolutely dominant. Front runners in the ACC with Miami. Miami had a couple of close calls in a row. It's going to be fun, the battle between those two when they finally match up. At seven, it's Georgia. Georgia played good football against Auburn. It wasn't great football. It wasn't Georgia coming off of a lost football. But still, good football. A lot better week than a lot of their friends in the SEC, including the team at number six, Alabama. Alabama loses to Vandy. That's insane. Not some, not a sentence I ever thought I would be saying, but it happened. Alabama loses. They're down to six. Georgia, I think, could be ahead of them, but I'm respecting that head-to-head for now. That might change later on with, you know, the rest of the schedule. But this is going to be a fun battle down the stretch in the SEC. At five, it's Penn State. Penn State, the Nittly, Nittly, <laughs> Nittany Lions. A really, really solid win over UCLA. They didn't go out there and dominate, but also I don't think they went out there and tried their hardest. They didn't want to get anybody hurt. They escaped. A good win for them out west. Nittany Lions, up. They benefit a lot from other teams losing. Number five team. I don't really feel like they're a number five team, but they... They beat everybody in front of them, and that counts for something. At four, it's Miami. They have survived two really close scares in ACC play. Cal, they had to come back from 25 this week. They survive a Hail Mary from Virginia Tech. That's two weeks in a row. They've been able to escape narrowly. I need to see more out of this Miami team because they're going to lose one of these soon, and it's going to absolutely plummet them. At three, it's Oregon. We had a little bit of a early season struggle from this team, but they were able to bounce back. They've looked really good the last couple of weeks. They've played some solid teams. The tight game against Boise State has aged really well. Boise State is a good football team. Oregon, if they continue to play like this, are back to it. This is, again, what we expected. A massive, massive week this week between them and Ohio State. We'll see which one of those is really the best. Excuse me. We'll see which one of those really is the best. It's the first 
big battle for each of these teams, aside from Boise State for Oregon. At two is Ohio State. That matchup with the, with Oregon this week is probably the biggest on the college football bill all season long. That is going to be the game to watch. It's going to determine a lot. It's probably going to determine the number one team in the country, barring something crazy. But Ohio State, for now, I have ranked ahead of Oregon just because Oregon had that slow start. Ohio State looked really good against Iowa. Iowa was the best team they've had to play so far. They started off slow, but they were able to come on and turn it on in the second half. Will Howard's played good football for them. And at number one, Texas back on top. They took a quick hiatus from the number one spot after Alabama took down Georgia. But Texas continues to be great. They had a bye this week. They get Quinn Ewers back. I think he's better than Arch Manning for now. Maybe he gets his name back in Heisman contention. But Texas is the best team in the nation. I've seen some people saying it's Ohio State. I understand that. But Ohio State hasn't had that key victory like Texas has. And I think uh, I think for now, Texas remains the number one team in the nation. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we are going to finish off our show talking all about the NHL. The NHL season dro- puck drops today. It's already started. It started at 430 We'll talk all about the playoffs, who I have winning the Stanley Cup, and who I have being there, and more. Coming up next here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 